Hey everybody, this is Ashton and welcome back to Without Code, where today we're looking at our floating link images widget for the web builder. Now this widget has a very focused purpose to display an image when you hover over certain text. When the image is displayed, the image follows the cursor smoothly, which we can see as I move my mouse around. And this simple functionality can be really, really useful. You can use it to display product images when hovering over product names or show pictures of team members or even use it like you would a tooltip when you display an image for certain words to display additional information in the way of an image. You can randomly highlight certain words or phrases in an article or a blog, or really any other way that comes to mind. The widget itself displays a list here, as we can see by the first section of our demo, but if you want, you can use single instances of it, which can be used for titles, individual links, etc. Now, since this widget requires the user to hover over text in order to display images, users on touch devices will not see the hover images. So keep in mind that this widget should be intended for desktop use only, where your users can hover with a mouse or other input device. Let's jump over to the builder and we'll take a look at how to set this up. We've got our hobby shop template open here, and on the home page, we've got this section just below the hero. Now let's say we need to add more categories, but we don't want to expand the page size with additional images that we'd need to add. So to save a little real estate on the page, we can make some text-based categories and use the floating images instead of the gallery style layout. So let's get rid of that row with the three categories here. And to save some time, I've already prepared a row below with three columns. And in each of those columns, I've placed one floating link images widget. Now each widget is displaying a list of three. So this bumps us up to nine total categories instead of the three that we had previously. I've also set the category titles along with subtitles for each. So from here, let's jump into the widget options. Here we have unique ID. And this is important if you're using multiple images of the widget on the same page. In our case, we have three widgets on the same page here, so we need to do a unique ID for each one. Links and images. In this section, we're going to set up all of our content. They're organized in list items, and each list item is a separate item in the list with its own title, subtitle, number, and link. And before we jump into that, I'll cover the last option here in the content area, which is display item number. This toggle allows us to display an item number for every item in the list, and this can be useful depending on your needs. But since we're using three widgets to form a grid, we're not going to use numbering in this case. Now for the list item content, let me open the first list item. And as you can see, we've got options to load an image, enter a title and subtitle text, as well as enter link information. Now I've already entered all the titles and subtitles since that's pretty straightforward. There's also an image added in here already pertaining to each category, but you can easily add or replace the image that you want to use right here in the panel. So we'll click replace and you'll be presented with all of your site images as well as the ability to upload new images. Now for this demo, we don't really need to add a link, but you can set these for however you need on your own site. And lastly here, link target. This will allow you to set the link to open in the same browser window or a new browser tab. So since we have all of our list items set up, let's give this a browser preview and take a look. And as we can see, we already have hover images operating for all categories here. Jumping back to the widget very quickly, we do have a design tab I wanna show you. And here is where we can find all of our styling options. Now there's two main sections here. We have container styling and content styling. Now in container styling, we can set background colors or borders for the entire container, add rounded corners, etc. And in the content styling section, we can style up all of the content. We can set fonts, colors, and control the image size and dimensions. Now these sections are pretty deep and they're loaded with tons of styling options. So I'm not gonna go over all of them individually because they are labeled with their exact function and are pretty self-explanatory. Now our example here is just a very simple implementation of the widget, but there are many possibilities for how you can actually use this. And one last note I wanna say before we wrap up, at the time of filming this tutorial video, we are aware of one bug in our global widget panel interface. The toggle input we see in the content section of the widget here for display item number is occasionally causing certain menus in the widget panel here to fail to open. So in the case of this widget, we've noted that in some instances, the design menus have not opened for us when that toggle is set to off. 
Now, to be clear, this is an issue with the toggle input within our widget panel as a whole and not a bug with the widget itself. So you're not going to encounter this issue with the toggle in the on position. And if you have any trouble opening a design section, just temporarily toggle the item numbers on and then jump into the design section content styling, make your changes, and then you can toggle it back off after you make your design settings final. Thanks again for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy this one, and we'll catch you in the next tutorial. Cheers.